Minecraft version 1.16 made things tough for villager breeders. They changed the way that villagers either threw or caught food. And a lot of the old villager breeders would, either the villagers would throw the food away into the void or the babies would end up with a lot of food. Either way, the food ended up wasted. It dropped the efficiency of the farms by quite a bit. And in some cases rendered them almost completely useless. So I've been playing around with breeders quite a bit since then. I've been trying to find a way to make a compact multi-cell breeder. One or two cells just does not create enough villagers for me. Technically four really wasn't enough. I tried using four. It's pretty slow when you have a large trading hall. It just doesn't really seem to supply the villagers that I need. This one's pretty mega. This is a 14 cell breeder. It produces villagers very, very quickly. It might be a little bit more than most people need. You could technically tune it down a little bit by just replacing these hoppers. If you didn't want certain cells to be fed, you could replace the hoppers with just nothing, a solid block or whatever like that. And then that would make that cell inactive. But I like having the 14. It produces villagers very, very quickly. So what I ended up finding out is that one, if you put villagers on trapdoors for some reason or another, this was completely accidental discovery, they don't seem to throw food as much. They still do throw food. It just doesn't seem to happen as often. And obviously, it will most likely land at their feet. It might land in the water and get carried away by the stream. But even this last villager cell, when they throw food, it does not end up falling into the thing. One of the villagers will end up picking it up. So we never lose food that way. The other thing I figured out is that if I put water on both sides of the cell and I've got them blocked so that the adults can't come out, a lot of times the babies will actually spawn halfway in the water and get sucked away immediately. And whenever they don't, they just need to walk a single step and whoop, they're gone. And so the babies do not hang around for very long at all. So even when they are throwing food, the babies are almost never there. Basically, I've seen a small amount of food get end up in the baby's hands, but I mean, it's like 1% at most. It's very insignificant in order in comparison to the amount of food that's required to power a cell like this. So I found that very few of the babies, if any, actually end up with any food so that it is a very efficient system. There is very little to no food waste whatsoever. This design is directional. In order to get the food distributed as evenly as possible, because they don't throw around food much, we're using a dropper-based system in order to get all their food to them. Now, due to some weirdness in the game, the droppers have to be offset by one block. You can see there's not a dropper over this villager, and this dropper is not over a villager because they will pull food diagonally. And if you do not offset them, then this villager over here will end up with twice as much food and this villager over here will end up with none and that's that's bad so they have to be offset in one direction and that direction is directional so if you're going through the full tutorial i will explain that in more detail in the full tutorial but if you're working from lightmatica there are two different schematics and they are based on the direction that you are facing so the facing direction will be from the front this is the front to the back so if we're looking in this direction, we are facing north. So in this one, you would use the north or west schematic. It's just called the northwest schematic. And on this side, we're facing south. So this is the south or east schematic. And you can see that the whole rail system and the droppers are all offset in that direction. And it's the opposite in this one. So there are two different schematics depending on the direction that you are facing. And also, if you're building from the Lightmatica schematic, you may want to jump ahead to the chapter called Loading Villagers that will show you how to get the villagers into the system. You want to build it up until about this level right here. You're not going to want to build all this stuff above their heads before you've got the villagers in and then follow those instructions in order to get the villagers actually into the system. We're going to start out with a wall of any type down at the very bottom of the build. We're going to place a temporary block on top of it place a soul sand behind that temporary block and a bottom half slab on the front of it. Remove that, place another temporary block on top of the soul sand, place a glass block or something else on the back of it, and then do that again. I like using glass because then you can see the baby villagers that are down below, but you could use solid blocks if you wanted. And the same thing, we want two glass blocks right here on the front of this. And then we're gonna fill in this area here. So we're gonna come here, come up two blocks, fill this in, because we're gonna put water in most of this area, so we want to contain the water. 
So we're gonna go like this, make sure we get these two right here, and then up one block like so. Same thing here, just like that. And then we're gonna place two signs, three signs, one here, one here, and one right here on the soul sand side. And we're gonna put water down at the very bottom right here and water log this half slab right there. And then on the front side, this is the front side over here. We're gonna come up three blocks of glass like so. We're gonna do that three blocks back. And then on top of the sign here, we're gonna place a glass block, three blocks up, three blocks over here as well, all the way through, like here. And then on the back side here, we're gonna come up two blocks, do a temporary block, and then two blocks here. We need this air gap right there, and then two blocks, and then we're gonna fill this channel with water however you want. You can place water at the top, and then kelp up to the top there. You can place four buckets of water if you want, or I like using ice. Just stack up ice on top of the soul sand up to here, and then just break it by hand all the way up. I'm just gonna use water buckets because I'm a creative. And you should end up with this little triangle right there. That's what we want. And then we're gonna do a very similar thing to what we did down here. We're gonna place a half slab right here, do a temporary block so we can place a wall right there. You could also place the temporary block right there if that helps. And then we still need the temporary block. We're gonna place soul sand on the back of it like so. And then just like we did down here, we're gonna place glass on both sides of this right here. And then we're gonna come up a block and place glass walls. Uh, we're actually gonna place glass on top of this water source here, and then three glass like so. And actually four glass, because we wanna cover the soul sand as well. We need to cover that corner back there. And then we're actually gonna come back a block right there, and then five glass right there. Glass right there, glass up, and then we're gonna place, first of all, we're gonna place four signs. Just right there. And then we'll place water down in this back corner here, should fall down, and then water log this half slab, and you should end up with something that looks like this. All right, we're gonna pause on the water tube over here for a little bit, and we're gonna set up some ice paths over here on the front, so we need eight blocks long. These technically don't need to be ice. Ice makes the babies fly out a little bit faster, but it might not technically be necessary. You could probably get away with using glass or solid blocks. There is a small chance that the babies might end up with food if they're not being shot out as quickly, but I don't think it matters that much. If you didn't have the packed ice, you could definitely get away with just using solid blocks if you wanted to. So eight long on both sides. Make sure that's eight, yep, that's eight looking like this. On the front side, we're gonna place some solid blocks. Then we're gonna place some trap doors on top of those. We want them so that they will open like this. So make sure that that happens. You could definitely use wooden trap doors. I like the look of iron trap doors. The downside is you actually do have to power the trap doors from below. That requires some scaffolding underneath in order to get to this point, most likely. Uh, up to you which one we want to do. Uh, again, I like the look of the iron trap doors, but they could definitely be wooden. So you should end up with a wall right here. This will contain the water. And then we want to, I like starting from the middle. So let's place some temporary blocks. So we got a temporary block right there. And then we'll place some trap doors. Again, these could be wooden. They just need to be trap doors of any kind out from the middle. And then this last one right here does not need to be a trapdoor. It can just be a glass block or a solid block for that matter. Same thing on the other side. And the last one doesn't need to be a trapdoor. And let's remove this temporary block. Should end up with something that looks like this. These last two trapdoors don't actually need to be trapdoors. Doesn't really matter. Either way works fine. I'm just making it consistent with the schematic which has glass blocks in that position. So we actually do want another trapdoor in the middle here. Let's place some glass blocks down underneath these trapdoors right here first, and then place a trapdoor down in the middle. And then we want to start surrounding this area with glass in order to contain the water. So this side needs glass all the way across. And then we want to place glass in the corners here. 
This could be solid blocks, that's fine. And then we want three glass across like that. And then the same thing on the other side. Glass in the corners, and three glass across. And then we can place our water down in the corners and it should end right in the middle there. Like so. And then coming back to the middle, we want to place a glass block on top of this trapdoor here. And we want to place glass blocks on both sides of it. And then we want to place trapdoors. These need to be wooden trapdoors. There's no way to power them. So we need wooden trapdoors all the way across to here. And then we're going to open them. And you, if you start from the middle and work your way out, I highly recommend that's the best way to do it. So start from the middle here and then just kind of place them on top of each other like so. And then you should end up with a perfect pattern because it's actually really important the way that these trap doors open. So be very careful with this and then open them all up like so. And then we can use any kind of trap door out here and we need them on both sides all the way across. And that will hold our adult villagers in but allow the babies to come out. And also the trap doors are important because the villagers will see their beds over here and they will think they can actually get to them because trap doors don't really count as full blocks but because they're actually being blocked off by these ones they can't actually get to their beds but they need to think that they can get to their beds. So just like that. So let's go ahead and place those beds now. So we want to come out four blocks like so, and then all the way over to this corner right here. And then same thing over here. Uh, might as well fill in this spot as well, as well as this spot. You can use whatever blocks you want. Doesn't really matter. Um, these can be solid blocks by all means. Uh, there's actually no reason why they're glass blocks. So fill in that. And then we're just going to place beds across this entire thing. So all the way across uh, with one exception right here. We don't want beds. We actually want to put three blocks like that. And then we want to stair step up and stair step up again. Remove that so it should look like that. And then beds across this whole section here. And on the same thing on the other side. I'll just do that off camera. And then we're actually going to fill in some temporary blocks like this. Place beds on top of those. And then remove all the temporary blocks and just repeat the same thing on the other side. Your bed should end up looking like this. And then the next step is to actually get the villagers into the breeder. Now, probably the easiest way to do that is with rails. So if you come across like this, the villagers are going to always be ejected onto the right side. So we're coming this way and we're dropping them off onto this side. And I recommend you start at the end and then move your way backwards. So we're going to start over at this one right here. We're going to place a solid block down here. And we're going to place a few temporary blocks so that we can place a piston one block away from it like that. We'll place a temporary block on top of the solid block and then an observer. And when we remove that temporary block, it will pull that back. We're going to place a string on it and it will put the block right there so that when a villager gets ejected onto that, it will fall straight through and then it'll get blocked over on its head. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little stuck. There we go. So we're going to place an activator rail right there that will eject them off of the system and then power the rest of these rails or however you can probably use regular rails for many of those. But make sure you power any rails and make sure you power the activator rail itself. And then you will also need a small cage. Um, this block right here on top of the activator rail needs to be glass and then the rest of them uh, any that here need to be glass as well but then these ones can be solid if you prefer. Doesn't really matter too much. And then but we would take our villager here, send him in a minecart, 
and he should get ejected into the system automatically. Now make sure he might land on top of the trap doors and just stay there. Don't send another villager until you've made sure that that one has actually fallen straight down into the hole. Otherwise this block won't be pushed back into place and then the other villager will actually get out. So if you might need to come here and nudge him a little bit. But then once you've got two villagers in this cell, you can just move this whole thing over one block change this one to an activator rail. I kept forgetting to change them into activator rails. Don't forget that part. Change them into change this one to an activator rail. It'll actually take power from this one. So, and then just do this whole, whole system again, which was temporary blocks like that, piston, temporary block observer, remove the temporary block, place the string down in front, and then make sure you get the cage here and then you can remove this other one as well. So no matter what, that's probably how you're gonna to have to get the first two villagers into the system. I actually recommend that you just set up a dumb breeder, which is just like a bunch of beds with a cage, put two villagers in it, and then just give them food and let them breed up until you've got the full 28 villagers or half of that many, and then do it all again. And you can use just use water to flush them to the corner. And when you do so, then they will hop into a minecart through the corner of a glass block or something like that. That's probably the easiest way to fill this thing up with villagers, but you could also use the breeder itself to fill them up with villagers. So you could come over here, you could finish up this channel right here, and then you could build a little water elevator, fill this whole thing with water. Uh, we'd need to come up another block, and then you would actually have to run the water channel all the way across. Technically, you would probably run all the way over here, all the way over here, and then all the way over here, and then like so. And then you would set up a water channel that drops the villagers off right here, like so. You just set up a water channel. And so you could feed these guys some food. You could just put it right here on this trap door and they will grab it from there. And then you could wait for them to breed up and then you could have the water carry the villagers into the next cell and then you could remove this and do the same thing over again for this cell and on and on and on again. But that is a very slow process because you do not want to get more than two villagers in each cell. So you probably don't want to, once you've got three cells filled, you probably don't want to feed all three of them. You probably just want to feed one or two so that you're not having baby villagers coming in really, really fast and then it makes it harder to control them. So this process would take, you'd get two villagers every two minutes, 20 minutes from two villagers that are breeding. It's very slow, it's very, very slow. So that's why I recommend a dumb breeder because it's just a little bit easier, but this is also another way that you can do it if you wanted to, but it would take a little bit more time. Now that we've got all the villagers and the breeder, it is time to place the food droppers. And this is where things get directional. And I couldn't, I couldn't begin to explain to you why this is necessary, but it is, unfortunately. And we need to offset the droppers one block over to one of the sides. And the way that we determine that side is that it is always the south or the east side. So we're facing north right now. We want to face it towards the east side. We don't want to place, face it towards the south side because there isn't a south side. We're looking at these things villages right here, we're going to place it towards the east. If we're facing the opposite direction, if we were facing it south, we would still face it towards the east side. So then it would be on the left side and not on the right side. If we we're facing it here. If the whole thing were facing towards the east, we would face it towards the south side. So it would still be on the right side, just like this one. But if you're we facing towards the west, we would want to place it towards the south side, which would be on the left side. So I'm sorry if that's a little bit confusing. Just always, whatever side, south or east, you want to place some blocks like this, some temporary blocks so that we can place droppers. You notice I am one drop, one block over from our villagers here. And we're just place eight droppers like so. And then we're going to have a gap and it's going to be over a villager. That's perfectly normal. You could use glass block or whatever. Then eight more droppers like this and then we're not going to place one right there over this last villager right here that is because for some reason they will steal from the other side so if we placed them right over each of the villagers then it wouldn't work properly one of the villagers would end up getting twice as much food and then 
like this villager wouldn't get any food at all because they would all steal diagonally. So if we place one here, this guy would take from this dropper that was right over his head, and he would take from this dropper. He would take both of those sets of food. This guy would take from this dropper, this from this one. So instead, we just offset it over so they don't have that option. They only get to choose from one dropper, and then that works. And then they got to do the same thing over here on the other side where we just place all the droppers. I hope that's not too confusing. Uh, you can follow the schematics if you want to. Just make sure you're using the right schematic for the direction that you're facing. But uh, south or east side, that is the side that you want to offset one of the droppers towards. Then we're going to place hoppers going into all these droppers here on the outsides, like so. On the side that doesn't have beds, we can place glass blocks two layers of glass blocks here. And that'll help keep the food in as well as the babies themselves. And then we're going to place glass in between the hoppers, glass in between the droppers here. Actually, in this gap right here, we're going to place glass down below as well. Glass there, glass there. Place glass right there in the middle section right there. Solid blocks are fine as well, again. I don't think there's any part of this whole build that glass is actually necessary. So it should look like that. And then on this side over here, we're actually going to need a glass block here. Might as well fill on in all three. We're going to use wooden trap doors. Have to be wooden because there's no way to power them. Uh, we need a glass block there. So we're placing them underneath the hoppers themselves so that they open like this, and that will hold the food in while still making them think that they can get to the bed. If you used a glass block, then that would actually block them from thinking that they could get into a bed. So it's got to be a trap door here all the way across. And then let's go ahead and close this side off here. Again, we're just preventing food from spilling out. We can place glass block there, glass block there. We don't technically need them there or there. It doesn't really matter. Um, also, again, they don't have to be glass. And then we want a row of blocks over here. Uh, this is the side that we offset the droppers to. So on this build, this is the south side. So you want one row of blocks on this side, and we actually want three rows of blocks on the other side over here. And then we want to start setting up some rails. So overall, the droppers, uh, the hoppers, place powered rails, powered rail in the middle block right here. So, and then on this side, we want a detector rail. So like that, uh, just use regular rails here. And then another rail, regular rail here, power rail all the way across. We missed a glass block here, glass block there. You want to power these rails. So um, this side, I think it actually does need to be a glass block. They need to think they, they can use that bed. So, or however else you can figure out how to power that rail. This is the way I like doing it. It's just, just like that. And then we want to come here. We want to come out two more blocks and then have a, another turn detector rail here and a detector rail here and then another turn like so and then we will place redstone here like that and then redstone the rest of the way across to there repeater in the middle and then just redstone across here so the repeater is opposite the detector rail the detector rail will power this send the signal down into a repeater in order to extend the signal the rest of the way across and that's how it works on the other side so the basically when the cart comes across here it's already given carrots to all these droppers right there then the detector rail will power all the droppers and then the same thing over here and for some reason this side always ended up having extra carrots so i actually fire it off twice even though some of the time it won't have carrots in it but you want to set it up like that all right, so whatever side you've got the three blocks on. So if you were building in the other direction, that might actually end up on this side. So you want to be facing away from the machine 
towards the left side is where you want to build a little rail station. So we want to come out a block from here, stair step up a block, and then stair step up another block. This one's going to be solid, and we will place a power rail here, a detector rail here, another rail on top of the solid block, and actually remove that, place another solid block so that the detector rail ends up at a slant like that, and then place you want to power this powered rail right there. And then we're going to come out on the side of this rail here. We're going to place a solid block and then two more solid blocks like that. So we can place a comparator right on the side of this detector rail going into a solid block. Like so. Torch on the side of that block. Another block on top of that. And then a torch on the side of that. And we're actually going to place a fence gate should end up actually let's place a chest first right here and then put the fence gate on the front of that chest like that and that'll actually work and then we want another comparator right here and then a cauldron with two water bottles in it anything that'll create a signal of two and so that makes sure that there's enough food in the actual so we would actually place a mine cart here um, a hopper mine cart you just place it right here down on the detector rail and then when you've got some food in here place food down it should fill it up till a certain amount and then it should actually start it going and then actually yeah we've uh, missed something here we want to place a lever here you might actually not need this. It depends on which direction you're facing. If it ends up in a complete loop, then that's bad. It's never going to refill its food. It's just going to go forever. You want to put a lever right behind this block that the cauldron's on. You want it to actually loop back in, and you should see it follow a pattern like this, where it actually turns right and then goes back in to the docking station, gets some more carrots like that. That's what it should end up looking like. All right, we're almost done here. We want to come back over here. We're going to place these four black glass right here. And then we want to come up 12 blocks total from this block right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Same thing on all four sides, except for the front side. We only want to come up 11, technically 10, because we've already placed this glass block right there. But basically, we just want it to be one block lower, like that. And then we're actually going to place a fence gate out in front of this, like so. And then glass on both sides. That'll stop the water from coming through. And then we need to fill this whole channel with water, just like we did before. Kelp, water buckets, ice, however you want to do it. Just make sure it's all water sources all the way up. There we go. And then that's actually where we're going to end up setting up our villager cell. You could use any villager holding cell that you want. I like using larger villager holding cells because the smaller ones make it a little bit easier to get the villagers out of it, but they don't hold quite as many. You end up having entity cramming issues and whatnot. I like using the large ones because they hold more villagers. This thing could easily produce 100 plus villagers. Trying to fit those in a single small area can be very difficult. So I like using a large holding cell and then just using water to flush them to the corner. It takes a bit longer to get them out, but it holds more villagers. If you want to use the same villager holding cell as me, you're welcome to use it, whatever one you want. But if you want to use the same one, you want a four block gap between this fence gate and we want to place a sticky piston pointing towards the side there. We don't need these, these are temporary blocks. Place an observer facing straight up. Then we want four, five glass blocks on the end of this observer here. And then in the middle of these five, we need three more, creating a little hat shape right here. And then that should be a one block gap between this block and this block right here. And again, none of these actually need to be glass. And then at the end of our little hat, we want two more blocks, turn and come back over to this observer over here. Then we want a solid block right on the corner of our hat here. Place a torch on the side of it, should extend our piston. Place another solid block on top of the end of the observer here. Redstone dust right here, going into a comparator. Two more redstone dust turning, 
and then another comparator pointing into this solid block here. We want a repeater right here and a repeater right here. And then a solid block on the end of these two repeaters and the redstone dust coming over like this. And then over here, we want a temporary block, at the end of this piston here, and then just like that. And then we're gonna come and turn and come back over here. And it should be five blocks and then a solid block. So we want it right there. And then redstone dust on those blocks like that. All right, then we're gonna end up putting a dispenser pointing straight up on top of this solid block and another dispenser straight up on top of this one. This one is going to get a water bucket in it. This one is going to get a hopper on the side of it. And then we're gonna place a redstone dust on top of this block, another block on top of that, put a button on front of it. And then we're gonna place solid block, start with on top of this repeater, like so, and then come around. So we one pass this dispenser here, come around this side to there. And we should end up with a four by five area here. We wanna actually place another solid block right there, uh, right there, sorry. So this is where our villagers are gonna go. This blue is gonna be out, our outside border. We'll place glass on top of this border here. And if we push this button here, we should get the water to dispense immediately. And then we should hear a tick of this dispenser right here. We can actually put a chest on top of this. And this one is going to get filled with mine carts. So we're just going to go ahead and put a rail extending out this way. So that's where you will send your villagers for whatever purposes you need them to. However you build this rail is up to you. This is kind of a starter idea. There you go. Fill up the villager holding cell up here. However you want to do this as well. Just kind of go up so that we're at least two blocks higher. We need to make sure it's at least this high so that the adult villagers, actually it just needs to be that high, so the adult villagers can come through. Just need to fill that all in. And then you might want to give yourself a nice little platform over here to work with whatever you want, you know. And you should end up with something that looks kind of like this. The critical dimensions are that the cell should be four blocks long, five blocks wide, and four blocks tall. The villagers need to drop two blocks so that they can't get back into that tube right there. There needs to be at least two blocks tall that, that they can get through the tube. And that's really all there is to it. The platform isn't really that important. Make sure you don't forget to put minecarts in there. And then, yeah, if we put some minecarts in here, actually, we can actually see it working. Fill this up with a bunch of mine carts. And if you had villagers, they'd get pushed over into the edge here. And then just as they're getting right towards the edge, it would dispense out a mine cart and that would actually grab a villager. And we can actually, let's go ahead and put a villager in here or a few. Every once in a while, the system may miss and not, you might end up with an empty mine cart. It's pretty rare though. So there we go. Boom. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you really enjoy this breeder. We've had a lot of luck with it in our survival world. We created at least 300, 400 villagers from this thing and it's been very successful. So I hope you have the same success as well. And I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Bye now.